Good morning, I'm Sophie Roselli. Throughout history, it's been shown time and time again that segregation is very prevalent in our society. There was even a point in time when this was enforced by the government. This has been stated by Library of Congress, which example is that Jim Crow laws were enforced in the 50s. This means that the government was actually promoting this segregation in the community. Even after the abolishment of these laws, segregation is still prevalent in today's society. As shown through these pictures, it is still here today, and the question is, why? After it's being abolished, it still is here, which is why there's such a big issue surrounding this topic. As shown from this graph, it shows a the disproportion between whites and minority groups as to houses that are being shown to them. Now, this is caused by the real estate agents that are showing the houses and the properties. They only show certain houses to white people rather than minority groups. This can also be stated in Distant Magazine, which is an online article that states real estate agents are only, only show certain houses based on skin color, which also poses the question of why. The importance of this issue is to create equality so that people can live in harmony and be a unified group rather than it being segregated. As shown from letter from Birmingham Jail is that segregation is infecting the population. This can also be seen in Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech when he says, unlike so many of their moderate brothers and sisters, they have recognized the urgency of the movement and sense that need for powerful action and anecdotes to combine the disease of segregation. This means that even in 1963 when this was written, that segregation was very prevalent in the society. Also from, stated from Segregation, the Rising Cost of, for America by Ingrid Ellen, a professor at New York University, states that levels of segregation remain extremely high. Even after the decades that have passed, it is still prevalent in our society, which means that nothing has been done, even after the abolishment of these laws. Also, from the urban transformation of the developing world, it shows how groups and cliques are shown in these communities. People gravitate towards groups rather than being separated, which is creating and aiding in the segregation that is shown in communities today. Now, after looking through the ethical, social, and cultural lenses, this posed question, to what extent does the impact of housing discrimination create a racial divide in communities due to real estate agents? Now, some people may believe that segregation does not exist anymore after the abolishment of these laws. Many people think that it's a thing of the past and that it's no longer prevalent in our society. This can be stated in the online organization Teacher Serve that says the Equal Housing Act and Brown versus Board of Education aided in the fact to help people create a more unified community and allow for people to be, live in harmony. However, this cannot be further from the truth. According from a nonprofit blog, Segregation Then and Now, it states, the schools that have the most disadvantaged black children to attend today are segregated because they are located in, seg in segregated neighborhoods. So instead of this issue becoming solved and becoming very becoming better for our society, it is now becoming still segregated even in communities and affecting the future generations, which means that it is not being solved. Now, according to this quote, housing discrimination isn't getting better. If anything, it's getting worse. This is from Next City, which is an online article. Now, the reason that this is happening is because of the real estate agents that are to blame. They are only causing, they are only showing certain houses to certain groups, like the white people rather than the minority groups. Also, this can be stated from Future, the real estate website that states, majority, majority black and majority Hispanic neighborhoods on average have three real estate agents, while white people, majority have 12. So this is also aiding in the fact that communities are becoming segregated because there is such a advantage for the white people rather than the minority groups. Now this led to a potential solution to create businesses throughout the communities that promote desegregation. By creating these businesses, it would allow for people to have more of an equal opportunity, but it would also allow for people to have interracial businesses and people working for them. According to an online database, urban.org, it states, we must directly confront inequitable public and private practices that become all too efficient on segregated communities. So this means that with the segregated communities, there are businesses thriving off of this, which is causing for there to be such a divide in the community rather than living in harmony. So the businesses that rely on segregated areas need to become more interracial so that there can be a more diverse community in these areas. Now there are some limitations to this, which is that the government cannot force this. There are certain things that the government can do, but to cause people to show who they can hire and who they cannot cannot be enforced by the government. One thing that the government can do is the Food and Drug Administration. They can alert people on health effects 
but rather than showing people who is hired and who is not hired cannot be enforced. This would make it not an accurate solution. Another possible solution is to force areas to desegregate. By the government doing this, it would allow for people to be able to have a desegregated community and for people to live in harmony rather than being segregated. This can be shown in LPV because back in um, many decades ago, the government forced black males to fight in the Civil War. So if the government could do this, they could also force areas to desegregate. But there are some limitations to this. This wouldn't solve the problem that is at hand. By forcing people, they would not have an open mind to desegregation. So if this were to become a thing, then it would not allow for people to truly solve the issue at hand. This can also be stated by Sabone Harbor, who is a sociologist, says that acceptance cannot be faked. So if this were to be the if this were to be the solution, it would not ultimately solve the problem that is at hand. This overall led to the optimal solution to enforce a class for real estate agents. By doing this, it would allow for people to be knowledge on how to create a non-biased view of the real estate agents and for people in minority groups. There's already a class in place for real estate agents to have the real estate license, as quoted by Wiley Online Library. So in these classes, it can be incorporated on how to create an interracial view and show how this to people who are minority groups and to white people on an equal playing field. Now there can be some limitations to this. This would cause funding from the government, so they would have to have some sort of way to get money, maybe through taxes or through some sort of view like that. But also this is not guaranteed. It can be encouraged and taught throughout this class, but it would not be reliable. In order to make this more reliable, there would have to be something that could really promise this, but since it is the view of people and through the people's mindset, you can't ultimately change the mindset of people. So in conclusion, there needs to be changes in the community in order to make this happen. To enable my, do, by allowing people to be able to take this class for the real estate agent, it would create a more unified community which would allow for people to have more unison and to create an equal playing field for minority groups and for white people. Thank you, what questions do you have? Um, first question, what information did you need before you began your research and how did that information shape your research? I needed to know how prevalent this was in our society because I knew this was an issue definitely back decades ago when segregation was a thing, but I didn't know how, how well known it was in our society today. So in doing my research, I had to see if this was really a current issue today rather than years ago. And second question, what advice would you have for other researchers who consider this topic? I would say to, to do something based on where you live, because I know that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something based on our location. So I would say in researching this, try to make it more, more relevant to you personally and where you live rather than just on the broad spectrum of things. Thank you, ma'am.